Hey everyone, it's Sebastian Torres. I'm so glad to have you here. It's been an exciting week. I'm gonna show you how to use these LCM Lores to create these amazing animations with your own footage. This is the advancement we've been waiting a whole year for. Animation is finally here in Stable Diffusion. Stick around to the end and I'll show you how to level up your Stable Diffusion game using DaVinci Resolve. First up, let's add our prompt. Now, like always, I've got the name of a woman and we've got the LCM Laura already applied in this prompt. Okay, so this is a picture that I've actually made using Blender. So I use the human generator, I believe it is. So we're now we'll go into our settings. What I've been doing up until now is using the oil array or the DPM plus plus ST Karas. I actually did install the LCM, which does not come stock with automatic 1111. I'll leave directions on how you can add this to your automatic 1111. It's just a winner. It's made for this sort of thing. With the sampling steps, we'll go down to eight, which is great because it means that we'll be able to generate things a lot faster. And that's really gonna come in handy with this sort of image that I've got here. Now I'm actually only interested in this portion of the image. Occlusion is a big problem with stable diffusion. So if I don't include this part of the costume, it'll actually think that these yellow stripes are her hands for some reason. Um, and you may even find that some generations, it'll actually turn these yellow stripes into her hands. The picture is actually 1920 by 1401. What we'll do is we'll change our resolution to 1920 by 1401. I understand some people have computers that cannot generate images this large without it taking 45 minutes. CFG scale, we can go between one and two and our denoising strength always the one. We've got to go into the control net. The first one will enable pixel perfect and we will click on tile and blur. Get rid of the preprocessor. Control net is more important. We'll skip to the second one. Enable pixel perfect. And for the second one, we're actually going to go in here and do temporal net and we'll go control net is more important. And now we'll go the third control net or control net unit two, enable pixel perfect. We'll go with soft edge, leave this preprocessor as it is. Control net is more important. I'm going to actually generate this and leave it in real time. So we'll see how fast it does the generation. Again, keep in mind, because I am doing such a large image, it will take a little bit longer than most other generations. So most people are generating 512 by 768 images. So it does tend to be a lot quicker. Because I am trying to do VFX assets, I need it to be a lot larger than 512, obviously. But if you're doing smaller images, it will be a lot faster than this. Let's see what we get. 33.4 seconds. So the leather actually looks pretty good. I like the skin. The detail in the skin and the hair looks actually pretty decent. It's actually improved the image quite a bit. And you'll notice that it didn't change these into hands, which is fantastic. If I'm happy with that, I'll come down here and I'll do recycle. That is the actual seed number, as you can see here, from this image. If you're happy with that one, let's reuse it again, right? So we'll go to batch. So now we'll copy our link in here and our output directory, generate that. Now in this second example, I'm gonna show you how to create the animated look that you saw at the beginning of the video and also in the teaser. We're gonna need the Eternal Dark Gold Max model. Now this one isn't available on Cibid AI anymore, but there will be a link to where you can find it in the description. Along with that, I like to use the Moist Mix VAE. This really heightens all the colors. And we'll use Clip Skip too. Now we're gonna need our prompt for this. And along with the prompt, I also like to add this. I find that these two statements help me get that cartoony sort of flatter look and we'll go into our Laura at our 1.5 and we'll drop in our image again let's come down to LCM sampling steps we'll go to 6 and we'll need 1920 by 1401 okay reduce this down to 1.5 and we'll go to 1 for our denoising now we don't need a seed because it's going to give us a completely different seed than what we had before we'll come to our control net we'll do our tile 
no preprocessor. Control net is more important. Pixel perfect. This one we use temporal net. Control net is more important. Pixel perfect. The soft edge. And control net is more important. And we'll generate. And now we'll be able to see the amount of time it takes to generate this one as opposed to the realistic one. We'll be able to tell the difference. And this one was 29 seconds, so it's slightly faster because it has a lot less detail to work with, but there's still the resolution's pretty big. So as you can see, at 1920 by 1401, it's actually pretty decent. As I was saying before, I'm actually, I'm not gonna use the entire image. I just want this section here. But the good thing about this is it gives you the ability later on, if I was to do this with the green screen background, it gives me the ability to actually reposition my character in the shot which is great. As I was saying, it does take quite a bit of time because I am rendering such large images. If you're doing smaller animations, there's a good chance that this will be a lot faster. It also depends on your computer. So you can also go the route of doing smaller images and then upscaling and inpainting them so they got better quality. But I'm finding that I'm actually getting better results if I go straight off the bat at 1920 by 1080. Yes, it takes a little bit longer to render them, but because I use 3D applications, I know how long it takes to render those things. So if I got to wait 30 seconds for a frame, that's actually pretty quick. That's almost in the territory of using Eevee in Blender. Now we do have quite a bit of flickering in the white suit. I'm assuming that's partially because I haven't actually trained a model with this character yet, but it could also have something to do with the actual character's clothing. So it is kind of shiny, so I probably should have gotten rid of that shine, but I'm actually happy with the consistency. It's, it's actually looking pretty good. Now there's obviously certain tricks we can use in DaVinci Resolve to de-flicker these things. Uh, but keep in mind that if you don't have the paid version, um, you won't be able to use that. So this is the original image that we have. Now we have the character taking a helmet off and I've actually gone in frame by frame and had to paint that face back in because it was kind of destroyed. You can see how it kind of glitches a little bit. So I figured out the better way to do it would be to actually render out in Blender the same animation without the helmet. As you can see, the face is far more consistent than it is in the other one. But the good thing about Blender is that it can actually give me this as well. And we can use that to our advantage. We'll take all three of them and create a fusion clip, go into fusion, and we'll actually deactivate them. And we'll see which one's which because they're all just called media. And I'm pretty sure this is the, here, okay. What's this one? Without the helmet and with the helmet. So the one with the helmet, we actually want to plug that in here. We'll come in here and actually turn the channel to luminance. So as you can see, it's just given us the helmet now. And we can get rid of one of these mergers. We don't need both of them. And we'll throw this on top and the other one beneath it. So now as you can see, we have the full image. Okay, so now when we go across, you'll notice that the face doesn't change. We have quite a bit of glitching in the helmet, but that's purely because I didn't train a model with the helmet. So it's probably a good idea to do that. If we go to our inspector, you'll see that got that wide image that I originally wanted anyways. That way we've got that cinematic sort of look. Now being a visual effects artist, I'm used to working in layers. So I'm gonna be using Stable Diffusion purely to give me the layers I need to create the final image. The idea that we can just click a button in Stable Diffusion and it'll give us exactly what we want. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that subscribe button because we're really gonna be delving into this topic going forward. So guys, what do you think of this new method? I reckon it's still early days, but we have a lot to explore with it. Let me know in the comments down below, what are you eager to use it for? I want to actually use this for some live action looking stuff. I like the cartoons, don't get me wrong, but the live action stuff, that's where I think this is really going to shine. If you like this video, stick around for the next one.